I have read, most reverend fathers, in the ancient writings of the Arabians, that Abdallah the Saracen, on being asked what, on this stage of the world, as it were, seemed to him most worthy of wonder, replied that there was nothing to be seen more marvellous than man. Thus begins a short text which has earned itself the epithet Manifesto for the Renaissance, the Oration on the Dignity of Man by Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. Now, Pico may not seem an obvious person to position at the beginning of a MOOC on digital architecture. He's not an architect. He hasn't written anything specifically on architecture. So you could be forgiven for expecting a portrait here of Filippo Brunelleschi, for example, or Leon Battista Alberti. But Giovanni Pico della Mirandola is one of the most fascinating figures of his era, on account of his lifestyle, on account of his personality, and most of all, on account of his intellectual panache. Here is someone who embodies the spirit of a renaissance because at the age of your average architecture student today, 23, he sets out to take on the world and everything that's in and around it. Pico is exceptionally wealthy. He is a young nobleman who has studied in Ferrera, Bologna and Paris the most important universities in Europe at the time. He speaks Hebrew, Arabic, Greek, and of course Latin. And now, in December 1486, he publishes 900 theses under the title Conclusiones Philosophicae, Kabbalistiche et Theologicae that more or less cover the width and breadth of philosophical thinking drawn from every tradition he can lay his hands on, a catalogue of what he considers to be the most important questions concerning religion and philosophy of his day. Unsurprisingly, he immediately finds himself under attack for the outrageous ambition of his undertaking, for what is considered to be the arrogance of his youth, and most certainly not least, for the challenge he poses to the church. So what does he do? Well, he invites any scholar from anywhere in Europe to travel to Rome for a disputation of his thesis at his own expense. The oration is his welcome address for this planned gathering. In it, he postulates the idea that of all God's creatures, it is not the angels, nor let alone the animals, but the human being that is most exalted. Because only the human is free to choose what to become. We humans alone are given the choice to be either base and driven by our lowest instincts, or to raise ourselves up to the level of the highest spiritual beings. Having been criticised for the unruly range of his theses, he also makes an impassioned plea for the right to think freely and to practise philosophy. And astoundingly, for a man of his era, he seeks to unite into one encompassing philosophy all the big thinkers, ranging from Avicenna to Hermes Trismegistus, from Averroes to Scotus, and right back to Aristotle and Plato, where it all began. These ideas are nothing short of revolutionary at the time, and they still strike us as daring, even radical today. Pico never gets to hold his oration. Pope Innocent VIII suspends the event and instead sets up a commission to test the 900 Theses for heresy. In response, Pico recycles the second half of the oration in an apologia, but this does not solve his problems. He is excommunicated, which at the time means losing all social status, and he escapes to Paris, where he is arrested 
before being allowed to return to Fiesole, outside Florence, under the protection of his patron, the extremely powerful and equally rich Lorenzo de' Medici. Here, now approaching 30, he gives away much of his wealth and turns his attention to questioning the validity of astrology, thus paving the way for people like Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei and the foundation of the scientific study of astronomy. We don't know who murdered Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. What we do know is that in 1492 his protector Lorenzo dei Medici dies, and two years later, while visiting Florence, Pico is poisoned with arsenic on the 17th November 1494. He dies aged 31 alongside his close friend, the poet Poliziano. And why is Pico important today? Well, apart from setting the tone for the whole of Renaissance philosophy, he is an exquisite example of someone on the cusp of categorical change. We speak of a digital renaissance today because we find ourselves in an era where the way we think and do things is changing categorically, not just by degrees or by orders of magnitude, but fundamentally. A Pico della Mirandola was in a comparable position and his response to this was to embrace his universe, to think beyond categories and disciplines and nationalities and religions or identities and to claim his right as a free human being to talk about everything. His oration on the dignity of man is effectively a love letter to humankind. He may not have had the internet or a smartphone, but the scope of his vision, the intellectual acuity and the inventive imagination he puts on display are as remarkable now as they were then. And that is why he is truly marvellous and worthy of wonder.